On the peninsula of Island McGee in Antrim, Northern Ireland, there existed a community of 300 Presbyterian Scots. Among them was the Haltridge family, and specifically Anne Haltridge, the widow of Reverend John. One fateful day, while Anne was engrossed in reading sermons with her granddaughter, a sudden barrage of stones came hurtling through an open window. Startled by this malevolent presence, she called out to the Lord, swiftly took her granddaughter and sought safety, urging her to hasten. However, the presence persisted, causing the house to tremble under supernatural forces. Anne maintained that a devilish entity targeted the faithful, yet she remained steadfast in her belief that their faith would shield them. For a while, life returned to normal with minimal incidents. But in February 1711, during a late night, Margaret Spears found herself immersed in her mistress's Bible within the solitude of No Head House. In a moment of desperation, she cried out, Devil, get out! Devil, get out! Devil, get out of this house! You cannot stay! And so the demon departed the premises, leaving Margaret cursed until her grave. Neighbours flocked from all around to search the house, only to discover a macabre sight. Anne's old bedsheets transformed into a lifeless figure, accompanied by the sulphurous stench that filled their senses, invoking shock and horror. Seeking guidance, they summoned Reverend Sinclair accompanied by church elders to hold a vigil and acknowledge the presence of demons among them. Relentless, the devil persisted, and Anne met an abrupt demise, being stabbed in the back on February 22nd, 1711, Anne Haltridge slips away from life. In the aftermath of Anne's passing, her daughter and niece, Mary Dunbar, embarked on a journey to No Head. Mary, a respectable and learned gentlewoman, hailing from Castlereagh, County Down, was a stranger to Ireland McGee.
Curiously, one night, Mary discovered a peculiar bundle, an apron fastened with five intricate knots. Intrigued, she began to untie them, unveiling Anne Haltridge's bonnet. Overwhelmed, Mary convulsed and collapsed to the floor, exhibiting the symptoms of a stricken animal. She was promptly put to bed and closely attended to by Reverend Sinclair. Mary became a recipient of nocturnal visitations from eight witches who relentlessly called her name, tormenting and striking her. Faced with no other recourse, it was deemed necessary to involve the law. Sweet Island McGee My name is Catherine McCalmond of Island McGee That's the way it was They sent to say that Reverend Sinclair Had summoned me for a cause This was not a good time I had the washing half done As alas, I wanted to be clean you see, we worked as fishmongers, and my mother, she launders a smell so hard to clean. I was born in the Scotch Quarter when I met my James. I came to be where he was born. March it was cold, brought the wash to the yard The weak sun, it had some warmth They came and told me to come now There was no talk to be had I see every day Catherine in the district was summoned But Catherine McCallman refused to be summoned It made no sense to her Even when they pulled at her She piled all her washing away she was so scared that day, but it happened And when she was summoned, they lined up in no head Where it all happened, where it tormented less Mary Dunbar died Over the broad horizon There's the ships that go to the sea In every port here a whisper from Sweet Island McGee Where the broad horizon There's a ship that goes to the sea In every part here the whisper Magistrate Edward Clements, the mayor of Carrick Fergus, made his way to No Head to investigate. After diligent efforts, he managed to locate seven local women identified by Mary Dunbar. Catherine McComb, Janet Carson, Janet Latimer, Janet Liston, Margaret Michael, Margaret Mitchell and Elizabeth Seller. These women were confronted with the threat of arrest. Under pressure, they eventually agreed to undergo testing. 
As Mary Dunbar approached them, she fell into a fit. Mindful of the potential harm of condemning innocent women to the gallows, a series of blind tests were arranged. Thirty local women were assembled, including mother and daughter Janet Liston and Elizabeth Seller. As Mary locked eyes with the accused, she let out a piercing scream and crumpled to the ground. William Seller vehemently objected to these proceedings. Ultimately, the women were singled out from the lineup, arrested and bound to appear in Carrick Fergus Court. Irons were even employed to nullify the witch's alleged powers. On March 31st, 1711, a jury consisting of 12 honest men and 12 senior judges summed up the evidence for the jury to consider. Vicar of Belfast, William Tisdale, believed that Dunbar singled the woman out based on their diabolical appearances. After a few minutes, the jury returned with the verdict. Eight women are sentenced to a year's imprisonment. Although the accused are imprisoned and therefore robbed of their magical power, Mary's symptoms escalate. Once home, she claims she has been tormented by the vengeful spectre of William Seller. Back at Island McGee, the hunt for the final suspect, William Seller, was underway. Aware that the law was closing in, he absconded but was finally found by a local constable. Are you not satisfied that these men can lay such a charge? To my wife and my daughter, I'm sorry. I've lost my reason to live when your wife is your life and your daughter is born. They have no right and no reason to believe in such evil. Rest in peace What are we If we don't see what is wrong Will we learn She can hear I've fallen in my soul Is that William Seller was found guilty of witchcraft at the same court that condemned his wife and daughter. But he was the only man to be executed for witchcraft in Ireland. from 
there were no winners in a trial of witchcraft. The Witchcraft Act that condemned the witches was repealed in 1821. However, the spectre of the trial haunted the people of Island McGee for centuries. <laughs>